What's up, YouTube? It's your boy. It's your homie, Futuristic Mike. Welcome back to another Better Call Saul video. This is going to be the review for Better Call Saul Season 6, Episode 1 and 2. If you're a fan of Better Call Saul, hit the like on this video. If you're new to my channel and this is the first time you're finding me, subscribe and turn on those post notifications so when I post videos on Better Call Saul, you get them. Now, phenomenal first two episodes. This show is so great, man. I love it. It's literally up there with Breaking Bad. One of the best TV shows, arguably, is back and better than ever. This show has such an enormous fan base, it's not even funny, and so did Breaking Bad. I don't really want to compare this show to Breaking Bad, but it's hard not to because of how good it is. Bob Odenkirk does such an amazing job. There's those little Breaking Bad Easter eggs all over in Better Call Saul, but nothing will ever be quite like Breaking Bad. That show has such memorable and iconic characters. I'm loving seeing all the characters from Breaking Bad that are back in Better Call Saul. I love seeing more Mike. I love seeing Gustavo. I love seeing all these characters. It's just so great because we love seeing these characters on Breaking Bad. And now we're just seeing how it all started. Everything that took place before Breaking Bad. And I love it. Now, we don't know what's going to happen to Lalo or Nacho because we know they're not in Breaking Bad. Maybe Nacho is still alive. We just don't know because there was no mention of him in Breaking Bad. I remember they mentioned Lalo once. You know, Saul was in the desert with Walter and Jesse. And he said, did Lalo send you? So Lalo might still be alive after all this is over. We just don't know. Or maybe, you know, he dies and Saul just didn't know. But these first two episodes were great, man, in my opinion. I loved it. It continues right from where season five left off. Nacho is on the run because Gustavo set it up so that Lalo and the Salamancas must die. And Gustavo is trying his best to manage the situation. He doesn't know what to do because he's stuck in the middle. He's trying to run his business and keep the peace at the same time. Nacho keeps talking to Gus's men and Mike on the phone. They set him up at some motel. It's kind of risky because the area that he's in everybody is looking for him but he tries his best not to be seen and to be safe and it doesn't really work out man eventually the twins find him along with some other people as well and there's a big shootout at the motel you know nacho is in a car he's stealing a car and he's trying to back up and stuff and he's just shooting out the window it really just gets crazy and i feel bad for whoever was staying at that motel at the time because you know they witnessed a big ass shootout you don't really know where Nacho goes either because it doesn't show, but I'm sure he's still alive because in the trailer for the rest of the season, you see more Nacho. So he's alive. Mike and some other people go to Nacho's house and try to clean up his house, you know, so he's not found and stuff. They go in his safe, you know, take the money and everything. They clean up things just right. They replace the safe with another one and then they put stuff in it to make it look legit. Now, honestly, this show is obviously about Saul, right? Jimmy McGill. But it seems like it's a lot more about, you know, Nacho, Gustavo, and all those other storylines. It seems like they show those storylines a lot more than they do Saul now. It's crazy. But I did enjoy the Jimmy parts. I mean, that man is a phenomenal actor. He always kills it. He brings it to his character. You know, Jimmy is just trying to adjust to this new life. You know, he's now Saul Goodman. He's not being called Jimmy McGill anymore and at first Kim you know didn't support him all the way but now she has his back to the fullest and I love these two I just really wonder what happens to Kim you know we don't know about her at all in Breaking Bad there's no mention of her or anything so what happened to her what's gonna happen now we see Jimmy and Kim getting into some stuff together it's funny because they go to this country club they have golf and all kinds of stuff, and they're tired of Howard, so they're trying to take this man down. Jimmy goes in there and he causes a scene, you know, with Kevin and stuff, because Kevin really can't stand Jimmy. And then he makes it so that he can get into the area with the bathroom, and he floods the toilet on purpose, so the worker has to go and deal with the toilet. And he looks at, you know, some records from Howard and stuff, and he finds his locker, and he plants some coke in there. It wasn't really some coke. I think they said it was some flour or baking soda or something. But Jimmy had to hurry up and hide and act like he was drying off with the towel, you know, took his clothes off and stuff. When Howard walked back there, he didn't notice Jimmy. You know, Jimmy played it off good. 
and when he opened his locker, Cliff seen something fall out of his locker, a bag of powder. And you know, Cliff is wondering like, what the hell? And Howard's wondering how that got in there. It's crazy because this plays into the next episode. You know, we see Jimmy go to visit Betsy and Craig Kettleman. If you guys remember them from the first season, you know, they were doing some illegal things and they got sent to jail and they're pissed off, or at least Betsy is. She doesn't want to talk to Jimmy. You know, Craig is interested to know how to get exonerated and Jimmy is doing his usual scam and stuff, you know, trying to get them on board. Long story short, he pretty much tells them that their lawyer that they had, Howard Hamlin, is a coke addict. Jimmy says that, you know, he wasn't in his right mind. So Betsy and Craig go to visit all these other lawyers to tell them that they want to sue, you know, that Howard was doing coke when he was representing them. It doesn't work. And of course, they go back to Jimmy and they're like, I know what you're up to. You know, Jimmy always has an angle. And Betsy was pissed off. She wasn't trying to deal with Jimmy. But Kim went in there with Jimmy inside this tax place that they're running. Apparently, they're running some fraudulent tax company. They're giving people way less of their refund than they deserve. And they're pocketing the difference. Now, Kim was making some calls and she was threatening them, saying they'll go to jail for what they're doing unless they cooperate. Kim was just getting ready to turn them in. And Betsy ran over and hung up the phone and said she'll do whatever they want. So now they got to return all these people's money and do all this other stuff. But Kim definitely broke bad in this episode. I mean, damn, that's crazy, man. It seemed like Jimmy was always the one doing stuff like this. But Kim really broke bad in this episode. I was actually happy for Kim. I'm like, damn, she's never done no shit like this before. That was crazy. I'm really interested to see what's going to happen to these characters by the end of the season. This is the final season. You know, Lalo's on the run. There's some people that think he's dead. Nacho's on the run. Gustavo is trying to make peace with the Salamancas. We see he goes and shakes Hector's hand. You know, Hector can't talk. He's in that wheelchair and stuff. But he did make a truce with Gustavo. But I can't wait to see where this story goes, man. The first two episodes were really good in my opinion. I'll give both episodes a 9 out of 10. This show is so good, man. One of the best TV shows on TV. Seriously. If you guys aren't watching Better Call Saul, what are you doing? What are you doing? I know you've seen Breaking Bad because who hasn't seen that show? Okay? And if you've seen that, why are you not watching Better Call Saul? Better Call Saul is so good. You know, I was going to do each episode separately, but I decided to combine them for you guys. When the next one comes on, we'll get back to the normal schedule week by week. But this show is crazy. I mean, it really is. I can't wait to see what happens next. I can't wait to see when Saul actually gets, you know, his office that he has in Breaking Bad. I hope they show that. I'm pretty sure he's going to get that Cadillac because they show it at the beginning of the season. You know, when they show that big house. I wonder if that's Jimmy's house in the future or whatever. I don't know, man. There's so many things that I want to find out. I cannot wait to see how it all plays out. Um, Jimmy McGill, a.k.a. Saul Goodman, is a badass. Kim Wexler is a badass. Let's hope she survives. I hope nothing crazy happens to her. Because like I said before, she's not in Breaking Bad. Where is she? Is she alive? You know, did she move away somewhere far away? Let's find out. I cannot wait to find out. But what did you guys think of episode one and two? Comment your thoughts down below. Let me know your thoughts. What are your theories, thoughts, predictions, and everything else for the rest of the season? And this is only part one, you guys. We got a part two. I'm pretty sure this season has an extra like three or four episodes or something. It's an extended season since it's the final one. Kind of like The Walking Dead, just not as many episodes. But yeah, I can't wait for the rest of the season. Keep supporting your boy and I'll be continuing to bring y'all Better Call Saw content in the future. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe and smash that notification bell so you can never miss a video. If you guys want to donate to the channel, I got links below to the PayPal and Cash App accounts. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me get out of here, y'all. It's your boy, Futuristic Mike, and I'll talk to you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.